In the past in Kenya, agriculture was characterized by use of numerous chemicals like insecticides, herbicides and commercial fertilizers which have been used for producing crops, making farming a costly venture. Well, now let me introduce you to Azola farming. It is one kind of technique that has seen farmers benefit from its high protein levels than most green forage crops. Azola is a small aquatic plant with leaves that float on the surface of stagnant or slow moving bodies of water such as ponds or lakes. Many people know it as the duck weed most likely because it grows well in stagnant water ponds. It particularly grows best in warm places, even though it can still be grown in cold areas. But in Kenya, you can actually grow Azola anywhere, either outdoor or indoor in a greenhouse. And that's why we made our way to Nakuru County to learn more about Azola. And the best thing about this is that you can also rare fish while you are at the Azola farming practice. Now, let's go to the farm. Thank you, Karis. Hello and welcome to yet another exciting episode of Kilimona Biashara. Thank you for always staying with us, joining us for this show. And today we want to explore Azola. And what is Azola? Well, you can use it for various things. But have you been struggling with high cost of feeds? This could be your best alternative. So let's go talk to a farmer and learn about how to grow Azola, how to tender for it, and what are the options available for you because you can use it as feeds, you can use it as many things. Shall we join our farmer today to tell us more about this Azola? Then let's go to the farm. Monkey. Hello, Linda. How are you? Jumbo. <laughs> Thank you. Uh -huh. <laughs> Niko Salama. I see you are really busy. This is Azola. Yeah, this is Azola. Ah. Yeah. Actually, I, I was feeding my fish. Ah. Yeah? So you're feeding from here to here? Yeah, from here. This is where I grow them. Yes. And then I give them to my tilapia. Wow, this yeah? is interesting. Yeah. So you just throw them in? Yeah, you just throw them, they float, mm -hmm. and the fish will be very happy. And now you know, Mwangi, someone will now wonder, what is Azola? Mm -hmm. Perhaps you give us a, a brief overview of what Azola really is. Mm -hmm. So Azola is an algae mm -hmm. that grows in water. Uh -huh. So it just grows vegetatively, mm -hmm. and it's a very good uh, fish feed, mm -hmm. feed for goats, mm -hmm. poultry especially. Yeah. Uh, and also cows mm -hmm. and you can also formulate it into into other feeds by adding other components. Wow. So we'll talk about the uses of Azola later on but now where do you get it? Where do you source for Azola? I got this from a farmer mm -hmm. but uh, it naturally occurs even in dams mm -hmm. but although the varieties are different mm -hmm. so it's best to buy from somebody you know mm -hmm. Uh, uh, cultures it very well. So Azola has varieties, but which ones are those? Okay, it's the same, same. It's just like uh, the way you have, there is African, but there is Kalenjin, Kikuyu. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. But now the best one is, mm -hmm. is this, yeah. And how about this one? Does it have a specific name? No, no, no. Mm. Actually, it's, it's, it's just Azola. Uh -huh. But now uh, it originated mostly from the Philippines. Uh -huh. That's why. So it's not very common in, in, in Kenya. And since you said it originated from Philippines or Asia, how did you get to know about this or how did you begin this business? I encountered Azola as, uh, in my endeavors to cut down my poultry production costs. Mm -hmm. So actually I was very good at keeping poultry but the feeds were letting me down. Mm -hmm. So I had to look for other innovations mm -hmm. that would help me 
uh, reduce on feeding costs. So you started with poultry and then now the feeds value made you more motivated you to start this. With the things I was doing, I also keep bees, uh, fish, so it came and blended in well. So to discover it as a fish feed, I, I just wanted to grow them in my fish pond. But now the next day I found nothing. And why? Yeah? <laughs> so the fish had consumed all of it. Oh. So when I bought uh, some other seed coming back, they mm -hmm. started. I realized they, they are feeding and the growth rate was, was wonderful. Uh -huh. So I realized it was not only. And when I got more information from the internet, mm -hmm. I found actually it was one of the best fish feeds. So it was just a trial for you in the pond. Feed. Yeah, 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 actually. Uh -huh. The next day, it was all gone. Yeah. It disappeared, actually. <laughs> <laughs> they disappeared. You wondered why. Why, yeah. And they had consumed. Yeah, yeah. That is a good dynamic. It made you discover another venture. But how did you start in a greenhouse? I started with a few ponds mm -hmm. uh, in the Shamba. Uh, and again, as I was doing it, our, our area is very dry. Mm -hmm. So sometimes when there is no rainfall, all the water evaporates and it dries up. Mm -hmm. So bringing it to the greenhouse actually was kind of trying to save some seed. But when it came here, it grew very well, mm -hmm. as you can see from, from these other ponds. Yeah. So actually we decided to culture it here. And because of the environment, the heat, mm -hmm. and it's getting ammonia from the fish, yeah. a lot of nutrients. Mm -hmm. So we just decided now to do it here. And since you're using a greenhouse, like you're utilizing a greenhouse for Azola farming, mm -hmm. I'm just wondering, for someone who's starting this venture, can they do it outdoor? Because I know maintaining a greenhouse is quite expensive. Mm -hmm. You can start outside. Actually, Azola just needs about 50% uh, sunlight. Mm -hmm. So if you have a shade, if you don't have trees, you can put a shade net on top mm -hmm. and you're good to go. How do you start growing or planting Azola? And how is the growth rate? How long does it take before it matures? The Azola itself is seed because it multiplies vegetatively. Mm -hmm. So all you need to do is, even a handful is enough to colonize the whole of this greenhouse. So you'll just pick a little and, uh, and rub it off. Mm -hmm. So it's like you'll have segments of, of, of Azola, a lot of them. Mm -hmm. So when you have those, those are now the seeds. When you put them in water, they'll develop roots mm -hmm. and they'll, you are good to go. Another thing is that uh, you have to nourish them with nutrients. So for me here in the greenhouse, I use ammonia from the fish waste. That's what keeps them green and keeps them going. Mm -hmm. But for a farmer maybe who doesn't have fish, you can use fresh cow dung, preferably two days old, one to two days old. Mm -hmm. Uh, do a slurry and pour it in the ponds mm -hmm. and they'll be, that will be good, yeah. So actually when you're having fish, you've catered for another cost. You don't have to buy any other thing because you get the ammonia. Yeah, but you have to be careful. If you have tilapia, mm. you'll have no seeds sooner or later. But for catfish, because they are more of carnivorous fish, mm -hmm. They don't really like Azola, mm -hmm. like tilapia. So which fish would you recommend? Because now you've said tilapia are heavy feeders of uh, Azola. Yeah, for integration uh, with Azola, catfish is the best. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it normally doesn't really ferociously feed on it, mm -hmm. unless you starve it. But for tilapia, I think it's, it's the main dish. Oh. Yeah. Uh -huh. It's the cash crop. It's a cash crop. <laughs> That's interesting. Yeah. yeah, for tilapia, yeah. <laughs> Mongi, perhaps uh, allow me to take you back a little bit. We'd like to know more about yourself because you're so knowledgeable, you know so much about Azola. So what is your background? I'm a graduate, I'm an economics and statistics graduate. So from economics to a farmer? It's a passion that I developed. Mm -hmm. So uh, I came from employment. The bees brought me <laughs> from employment. So I was making about uh, 48,000 a month, yes. uh, net about 41,000. Mm -hmm. But one day I had put up some hives here at home. Mm -hmm. So when I came to see my parents, I found the bees had a lot of honey. Harvesting, I harvested over 80 kgs. Mm -hmm. Selling the 80 kgs is almost equivalent to my salary. So, and the bees, I had not put any input. Mm -hmm. They were looking for their food. Mm -hmm. 
they are protecting themselves from uh, predators and so on. Mm -hmm. So I decided if bees can work this way, maybe I can come now try poultry as a as an addition to that. Mm -hmm. And uh, with that now, the challenges with feeds, poultry feeds, yeah. that's when I came across Azola mm -hmm. and some other innovations here, yeah. like BSF. That is quite interesting, but I'd like to know what are the challenges when it comes to Azola farming as well as the management practices? Do you manage, how do you manage it? The biggest thing, especially as a youth, we, we lack the capital to do, mm -hmm. that is in terms of uh, financially. Mm -hmm. uh, in terms of land, we don't really have access to, 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 to land where we can do these things. Mm -hmm. But as for me, I've just grown organically, mm -hmm. step by step, and I've really taken advantages of the challenges that I've been facing mm -hmm. to try and solve them, and that's how I've come up with something mm -hmm. new that is helping me reduce my cost, increase efficiency, mm -hmm. and at least make something out of it. Talking of increasing efficiency, once you have a, a pond like this, full of Azola, mm -hmm. is there any maintenance that you will need? Especially for someone who's wondering, eh, hey, I have Azola, so I'll just be doing that. I'll just be keeping them stuck. If you have catfish, uh, the nutrients will be available because the fish will be excreting some waste, which is nutrients to them. Mm -hmm. But if you are doing uh, an outdoor pond, mm -hmm. you'll need just now to maintain with the cow slurry. And uh, with the, for you to know when to add, the, you'll see the, the green is becoming lighter and maybe they are turning red. So that is indication that they, are, they don't have enough nutrients to grow. Mm -hmm. So that's when you'll just uh, do your slurry and, and, and put it inside. And perhaps this is the last one before we mm -hmm. move. Mm -hmm. uh, tell me about the recycling of this water. Do you recycle after you've put for the first time? Do you recycle it at some point or it's just stagnant like this? So it depends on the, the stocking density. Mm -hmm. So if there are more fish, definitely they will excrete more than the Azola is absorbing. Mm -hmm. So with that we have to change the water. Mm -hmm. But again, we use the water to farm because it's, it has high levels of ammonia mm -hmm. and also in production of organic fertilizer. Mm -hmm. So every drop of water we use here, yes. To farm, it must pass through the, the, the fish as a way of water conservation mm -hmm. and recycling. Now, um, I think you said we can have a some and make some fish. Yeah, we, we can have okay. a some. Yeah, yeah. Which one is ready? I think this one is, is, is Ah, this good. one is perfect. It has yeah. a lot of azola. So, for harvesting, you'll only need a, a perforated container. Okay, why? The water just goes out to your left with the azola. Uh, okay. The azola, so you'll just dip in. It's as simple as that, you're left to the other. It's harvesting kidog. So you'll need a bigger one maybe yes. if you need more. But it's quite easy. Yeah, very easy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So once you harvest, you just put them here. So that now enough. we can now even go feed the chicken. Okay. Yeah. Let's go feed them. Okay. Follow me. Ooh, mm. Right behind you. Yeah. <laughs> That is quite interesting, right? Did you know about Azola? Well, today I've enlightened you. <laughs> we are nowhere close to the end of the show. We're just taking a short commercial break. And when we come back, we're going to show you some of the uses of Azola, including preparation of manure or fertilizer. So see you on the other side. Don't go too far.
Welcome back to Kilimora Biashara. Thank you for staying with us until now. If you're just joining us, today we are focusing on Azola farming. And I'm sure you're wondering what's happening here. This part, we're going to show you um, the process of making manure, which is very high on protein. Mongi, so what's happening here? What's this process? What we are doing here, we are sieving the final product mm -hmm. after we mix the mist of us, Azola. Uh -huh to create now the organic fertilizer. Uh -huh. And what are the components? Because I know Azola is one. What are other components? There are a lot of organic wastes. Uh -huh. uh, we have uh, maize stovers, that is dry mafefe. Uh -huh. we, we use manure also, the Azola and the fish, water from the fish. Oh, so it's pure organic? Mm. Yeah, this is pure organic fertilizer. Uh -huh. yeah. Mangi, you know what has really blown me is the fact that you're so youthful and you know so much about agriculture. Mm. Perhaps you tell us more about that because uh, with Kilimo we really like supporting uh, youth in agriculture. It's a passion personally, mm. but again I love the opportunities that it is presenting to mm. the youth, especially for decent creation of decent employment mm -hmm. and also in matters Okay, it's a way that youth can participate in agriculture despite the many challenges of lack of land, as I said before, finances mm -hmm. and sort of. So it's an easy way to, 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 mm -hmm. to get into agriculture and as a youth to contribute to mm -hmm. food security mm -hmm. and nutrition as well. Do you also have a youth group that you've plugged into this? Yes, a lot of them. Uh, teaching them how to do this back mm -hmm. at home. Mm -hmm because uh, most of the rural youth uh, I engage around here have access to, to, to land where they mm -hmm. do some farming. Yes. So here it's like a resource center for them. They can mm -hmm. learn some things and go mm -hmm. replicate them at their home. They come here for training as well. Yeah, we do a lot of capacity building for youth, mm -hmm. especially in uh, circular innovations, mm -hmm. like I showed you as well, and now the organic fertilizer. Mm -hmm. And also we do a lot of training on uh, entrepreneurship uh -huh. and coaching them how to become mm. good agripreneurs. You're really a very good agripreneur, I'm impressed. <laughs> yeah, actually our mission is to create at least 400 decent jobs oh. by the year 2026. Good job! Mm. That is really good. You see, that's impressive. Now let me take you back here. Tell me more about this process. The process takes about 20 days mm -hmm. to compost mm -hmm. the materials. Mm -hmm. And once we have the fertilizer, now we separate the, the big chunks from the fertilizer now. Mm -hmm. And then from there we pack. Ah. Yeah, we pack the fertilizer, it's ready for sale. Mm -hmm. And the results are good. Mm -hmm. We have even reported over 33% increase in productivity. Wow. Especially in maize and potatoes. So when you compare yours, these are organic one, as opposed to the other fertilizer. What are the economies of scale? One bag goes at 2,000 shillings. Mm -hmm. As you can compare with the normal fertilizer, right now it's about 6,000. Mm -hmm. So you can see the difference. Though for us, where you use one acre of synthetic fertilizer, we mm -hmm. recommend you use two bags. Ah. So the cost is about a difference of 2,000. And what about the productivity for someone who used uh, the other fertilizer and this one? The productivity is wonderful. Mm -hmm. As I told you, we had uh, over 33% increase in productivity. Mm -hmm. But then again, the magic about it is that uh, as you continue using it, your demand for fertilizer goes down because it's even more of a soil amendment than, yes. a, than a fertilizer. And which crops really do well when you use this fertilizer? Vegetables or which ones? Vegetables, it's the perfect, mm -hmm. especially horticultural farmers, mm -hmm. especially those who are exporting uh -huh. because of the chemical residues, mm -hmm. that the thresholds. Mm -hmm. So this one will really reduce. Mm -hmm. Other crops, maize does very well. Mm -hmm. Uh, potatoes does very well, cow peas, pigeon peas, ah. yeah, but the best it does well with horticultural crop. I'm just looking at this setup that we have here, quite conventional, very simple. Would you say it's labor intensive? Yeah, it's, it's a labor intensive process mm -hmm. because uh, the processes take place every day. Mm -hmm. And again, that's a good thing for us because we're able now to create more jobs for, for, yeah. for, for the youth. Mm -hmm. Yeah, On peak seasons, we even have up to 12 
casual laborers here. And already you've created jobs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We are very great. As Kilimo, we are really and truly passionate about empowering the youth. And I would like to know, so far, what are the challenges that you've experienced? Because you've told me on the other side um, of the feeds. Now I want to know on this side. So the biggest challenge we are facing right now is uh, our production capacity. Yes. It's still low. Mm -hmm because farmers have really embraced it. Mm -hmm. And again, considering the materials we have, uh, let's say like the maize stovers, they're also seasonal. Mm -hmm. So you have to have enough cash flows at that point in time to procure enough, mm -hmm. enough materials. Mm -hmm. And as I said, it is also very labor intensive. Uh, over 50% of our costs goes to, goes mm -hmm. to labor. So mm. during that, peak season you also have to have enough money yeah. to, to, to ensure you have mm -hmm. enough supply. Yeah. Because this is a very funny product. It's not <laughs> like the normal sugar. Yes. So mm -hmm. The demand is within a month you have to deliver so many bags mm -hmm. because it's the planting. So whenever the rain mm -hmm. goes down, mm -hmm. it triggers everything. The, oh. the demand for fertilizer mm -hmm. goes up. So you have to have adequate preparations mm -hmm. and such like. And since this uh, business you've said is labor intensive, I'd like to know about the market dynamics. The market currently is overwhelming. As I told you, we cannot even uh, satisfy, satisfy the, mm -hmm. the, the demand that we have. Mm -hmm. And the good thing is that uh, it's, it's a paradigm shift we are creating from the use of synthetic fertilizers mm -hmm. or chemical fertilizers to now organic, which is more sustainable. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and, and, and cheap. This institution, uh, which has a lot of things, including uh, it brings out the picture of circular economy. Perhaps you can tell us more about that because there's a lot to learn in this facility. Circular economies, we try and engage in very many value chains. Mm -hmm. As you can see, we had fish, azola, we have chicken, we are mm -hmm. doing bees. Mm -hmm. So they are all interrelated in one way. Mm -hmm. And the synergies that come out of there create a lot of e efficiency. Mm -hmm. uh, and this efficiency comes through recycling of materials. Mm -hmm. So, and if you can be able to produce your own fertilizer, yes. there's no need for you to get external resources. Wow. So that creates a lot of resilience for, mm -hmm. you, for you as a farmer. Yeah. And in the end of it all, we will be able to tackle the issue of food security, mm -hmm. nutrition security and such like yeah. challenges. Mm -hmm. From where I sit, I see you as um, so ambitious, which is a very good thing. I'd like to pick your thoughts um, in this institution. How do you see it in five years? What is your vision in regards to this? We are based, all our processes are based on agroecology. Mm -hmm. So, and we believe here that agroecology is the answer to climate change, to mm -hmm. food security, mm -hmm. to broken food systems. Mm -hmm. So we are very passionate about it. So we are looking forward to training more farmers mm -hmm. to even know how to produce this. Mm -hmm. Those that can't, we can sell them at the same time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Because maybe getting all the ingredients might be a problem. Yes. And uh, with all that, achieving that, I'm sure we'll be able to meet our vision of uh, creating the 400 jobs because almost everything is, mm -hmm. is labor intensive. Wow. And again, the good thing is that when you combine all these things, mm -hmm. you'll never be out of season because when bees come, you're there. When mm -hmm. You have uh, people planting, you have mm -hmm. the fertilizer. Yes. When the fish are mature, you have. So all year round. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That is really nice. Yeah, it's all about diversity. I'm sorry I had to stop you earlier on so that we can have this conversation. Now we can continue. Yeah, yeah, you yeah, said yeah. we'll also pack? Yeah, most okay. definitely. Okay, yeah. one, two. Cheza kama wewe. So now we, we can package yeah, this, yeah? Yeah, we can now pack it. So from here you you have to wait. Yeah, we have to wait. Okay. To 51 kgs. Ah, it's a lot, yeah. Yeah, yeah. You want 51 kgs. Yeah, because sometimes it loses moisture, so uh -huh. we have to add the one kg. Wow. So from here we you you we do just, everything here. Yeah, everything here yes. straight to the farmer. Okay. Yeah. Let's wrap it. So this one will go for how much now? So this bag of 50 kgs goes for 2,000 shillings. 2,000 shillings? Yeah. Wow! 
Wow. Mm. It's nice. It's very affordable. Yes. Very sustainable. And tell us about the name as well. So the company is Be My Partner. Uh-huh. But we're also rebranding to Nawiri Organic Fertilizer. Ah, why are you rebranding? It's just a market <laughs> dynamic. Uh-huh. And we saw it good to develop even the packaging should look more better than mm-hmm. this. Yeah. Thank you so much, Mwagi. That has been quite insightful. I'm thank so you grateful. Thank you so much. Thank we, you, thank we, you. we are super grateful and we wish you all the best in this endeavor. Karibu tena. Yeah. <laughs> And thank you for being part of the show today. Have you learned something about Azola today? It can be fertilizer and can be animal feed. And mark you, the fertilizer is organic. Yeah? And to top it up, it is also affordable. 2,000 shillings if you get this fertilizer and 6,000 if you go for the other. So actually it is one of the biggest uh, wins for many farmers especially youth who are beginning this farm aspires to hire 400 youth by the end of the year by the end of 2026 that's youth empowerment we truly appreciate uh, you also for listening to us and also be big on youth empowerment thank you so much my name is linda koske see you again next sunday for yet another amazing show of kilimona biashara See you then. <laughs>